It's good to be with you again in the most important way, in the Spirit. So let's invite the precious Holy Spirit to help us get into this amazing series. Precious Heavenly Father, we can't do this alone. We're talking about your Son, Jesus, and we need the help of the Holy Spirit, and we never want to take for granted the access, the privilege of access that we have to His presence. So right now, we just welcome you, Lord, to speak into our lives, to breathe and give us revelation about this this amazing person, the person of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, amen. We're starting this brand new series called Jesus. This is part one, and we're going to subtitle this The Lion and the Lamb. I really believe this is going to be life-changing for you and me. Anytime we magnify the person of Jesus, the identity of Jesus, the name of Jesus, something supernatural, amazing happens in our life. I believe that for you, for your family, for your home, right where you're at. I'm believing for supernatural outcomes in his precious name. Here's a question. If you could learn something new, something true about Jesus that you had never known before, would it change your life? The answer, it's an easy yes, it sure would. The better we know Jesus, the better we know ourselves, our destiny, our potential for abundant life. You know, it's been said that humanity's greatest ignorance is of itself. Society today works endlessly to normalize immorality, all while racing toward its own destruction. That's tragic. We live within the limitations of our own beliefs. Ignorance of Jesus is ignorance of true life, and that's death. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says something so interesting. It says, looking into God's word is like gazing into a supernatural mirror with the power to transform us into God's original design for our identity and our life. This series entitled Jesus, it's vital. It's revival, my friend. It's your life. We all need to know Jesus on another level, but that requires humility. That's right. Religious pride says, well, look, I, I've got my traditions, my doctrine, so I, I know what I know, and I don't need to know no more. Well, that's just pride. And we know the Bible says what it says about pride. That's just plain stupid. C.S. Lewis said this, a proud man is always looking down on things and people, and of course, as long as you're looking down, you cannot see something that is above you. We all need to see what's above and beyond ourselves and beyond our own frailties. To get us started looking up and into the future, let's read this powerful, powerful word about Jesus. Hebrews 1 verse 3. Jesus, he is the sole expression of the glory of God, and he is the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature. Did you hear that? Jesus is the sole expression of God's glory, the perfect imprint or picture of God's nature. And when we know Jesus better, guess what? We live in and through him, that perfect life. So let's take a deep, focused look at the identity of Jesus, and let's do it with an expectation that as we get to know him better, we will know ourselves better in the context of God's great plans for our lives. In this first segment, let's look at Jesus as the lion and the lamb. Come on. In these next few minutes, let's get to know Jesus a whole lot better. This is exciting. Holy Spirit is right here with us, helping us understand the person of Jesus, his identity more accurately, more intimately. My friend, a true revival can happen in your life, in your family. Anytime we magnify the accurate, the accurate biblical truth of Jesus, there are many, many blessings that are activated from the throne of heaven, from the throne of God into our lives. God the Father delights in us knowing his son better. And if you're a parent, you get that, don't you? So let's look at this, Jeremiah 9, verse 24. But let him who glories glory in this, 
that he understands and knows me personally and practically directly discerning and recognizing my character, that I am the Lord who practices loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. And just if you got hung up on that word judgment, remember this. Judge comes from the word dan, which means doorway to life. That's a good thing. Our culture is bankrupt of character right now. Many have just given up any morality. I saw a poster one day, it said this, I stopped fighting my inner demons. We're on the same side now. Wow, that's terrible. Why so hopeless? Because we've lost the true moral compass, the character of Christ. And you better know this, the character of Christ doesn't make peace with demons, with devils. Jeremiah 9 just advised us to celebrate this, that you understand and know me personally, directly recognizing my character, God said, that I am the Lord. So how do we do that? Well, by looking and focusing directly on the real Jesus. Remember the first thing that we read in Hebrews 1 verse 3? He is the sole expression of the glory of God, the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature, God's character. So let's do this. Let's know and understand Jesus better personally, recognizing his character. When you know his character better, your character comes alive. It revives. So let's jump in by examining the amazing duality of Jesus' character. Jesus, the lion and the lamb. If you've never heard this before, it may seem remote, distant, even a little bit confusing. Skeptics might say, well, now that sounds a little like designer identity to me, but no, it's part of the immeasurable broad spectrum of Christ's character. It's why he's everything we need. Everything we need is in Jesus. Jesus doesn't identify as the lion and the lamb. No, that's a mental health disorder. Jesus is the lion and the lamb. It's his true identity. He is the great I am who created everything. You know, you can put on a panda suit, but the DNA science will still track you as a human being. The Bible says that each one of us is called to be transformed. You know where? From the inside out, not from the outside in, from the inside out. A disguise isn't a bad thing if you're wearing camo in the woods so that a turkey thinks you're a bush, right? Your goal is to have the turkey for dinner, so you disguise yourself. You identify as a bush or a tree. We all know that you're not, but the idea is to have all the turkeys think that you are. So guess what? So you can get close enough to shoot one. Do you know that the devil does the exact same thing? 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says that he goes about as a roaring lion. He isn't a real one. He goes about as a roaring lion. He disguises himself as a lion. For what reason? To hurt people, to bring fear. Jesus said that the devil likes to kill people, so he uses disguises so he can get close to you. He has fake identities so he can deceive. He likes to use it as a hunting technique. Not long ago, five police officers beat a young 29-year-old person to death. Now, you can say that their identity was police officers, but the truth is they only dressed as police officers. It doesn't matter if they were male, female, white, brown, black, red. It doesn't matter if they were in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. What matters is they had no zero character. The police uniform was just a disguise to cover up what was really in their heart. Hatred, violence, injustice arrogance. The late Edwin Lewis Cole once said this, being a male is a matter of birth. Being a man is a matter of choice. You see, it doesn't matter how you were born. Character is a choice. Jesus is the choice. No one is born perfect and without the sin disease. We all need a true Savior, the true Savior, the Lion and the Lamb, Jesus. But again, that's a choice. Life is the sum of your choices. 
Martin Luther King Jr. once said this, and it was a powerful statement about true identity. Listen to this. He said, I look to a day when people will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. See, he wasn't anti-judgment or anti-measurement. No, no. He wanted right judgment based on actions and character, not appearances. You see, we've got people now who champion the exact opposite reverse of this. They judge based on appearance, but excuse bad behavior and applaud evil character. We need Jesus. We need the lion and the lamb to restore the standard of justice. Does this seem like a religious riddle to you? Maybe an enigma? Think of this. A battery has two ends what we call positive and negative. Only when both ends are connected does the chemical reaction occur in the battery and current flows, energy, power. The power is latent until both ends are connected to the circuit. Have you ever connected one end to a bulb and got light? No, of course not. One battery with two sides releasing power. Did you know electricity was considered satanic by many people when it was first discovered? See, power intimidates, but it requires differences in sync. Just like two of the same gender have no power to create life. That's just science. Doesn't matter if it's animals or humans. It's universal. Diversity, difference, working together produces power. It's not a riddle that can't be discovered. It's life. The lion and the lamb, the one true Jesus, two sides in harmony, producing true life, revival, power. Let me show you from God's word this amazing picture of Jesus. The apostle John, he had just had a vision from God while he was in exile on this island. It's a vision of end times. In Revelation 1, when John first looks at the resurrected Jesus, this is what he observes. Listen to this. He said, his eyes flash like fire. His feet glow like shiny bronze as if refined in a furnace. His voice is like the sound of many waters. Out of his mouth comes a two-edged sword. There's seven stars in his right hand. His face shines like the sun at full strength. John said this. He said, I fell at his feet as if I were dead. Jesus has to tell John, hey, hey, don't, don't be afraid. He touches them gently and says, don't be afraid. The famous book of Revelation is called the Revelation of Jesus Christ. It's the reveal of his person, his power and his anointing. So let's look at this powerful scene John describes here in Revelation 5, verses 5 to 6. Then one of the elders of the heavenly Sanhedrin said to me, stop weeping. He's saying that to John, stop weeping. See the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has won. He can open the scroll and break its seven seals. You see, John was weeping because eternal destiny was locked away, but then Jesus. Verse six, and there between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain. John sees Jesus as both the lion and the lamb. We get the full benefits of Christ on the throne when we truly see him for who he really is, the lion and the lamb. One Christ, both spectrums. The power from his throne flows as we engage our faith and believe in all of Jesus. He is one Lord, the lion and the lamb, the kingly strategist and the priestly sacrifice, a matrix of life. You need Jesus, the lion, but you also need Jesus, the lamb. You need the fierce defender, but you need the tender savior. You can't split or divide faith. Dr. Miles Monroe once said this, an army of sheep led by a lion will always defeat an army of lions led by a sheep. Why? Because a lion leads the strategy for winning, for overcoming. A sheep is led, vulnerable, tender. Remember Psalm 23? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We've got many needy, hurting Christians that are too satisfied with too little knowledge about Jesus. The shepherd is both lion and lamb. Jesus is the resurrected lion of the tribe of Judah. He is king, mighty, powerful, and conqueror. 
And yet listen as John the Baptist, his cousin, introduces Jesus to the crowds at the start of his ministry. John 1, verse 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming to him and he said, Look, there is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Isaiah 53 says something similar. It says, Jesus is like a lamb to the slaughter. You see, John was talking to a crowd familiar with the practice of a priest sacrificing an innocent lamb for their sins. From the days of Moses, God initiated a model. This was a model of a reality to come. The Israelites were to sacrifice a perfect lamb for their sins. That was under the old covenant. The new covenant was ratified and put into effect, into force, with the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God. God saves us as the lion and the lamb. The lamb slain redeems us. The lion protects and defends us. The matrix of God provides power to meet all of our needs as we recognize both points, lion and lamb. We've got Christians who want to flatten out the character of God to this narrow spectrum that makes them comfortable with their own character flaws. Look, power can be intimidating, but we've got to get over ourselves and let Jesus be who he really is. Remember, it's the lion and the lamb who opens the scrolls of your destiny. Don't try to micromanage Christ's identity so that you feel more comfortable. You miss out on his power, his revival. You don't manage Jesus. You bow down and worship Jesus. Maybe you're stuck on the image of baby Jesus. Or as he was going to the cross and the soldiers struck him in the face, did you not recognize Jesus being the lamb for you? He took the insults, the shame and the pain, the crown of thorns, the nails, the whip on his back, all for us. Yes, he did it silently. Yes, he did it silently. So that the angelic forces wouldn't hear one rumble or whisper coming from the ultimate warrior lion. Why? Because he couldn't save himself and save you. The price had to be paid. The lamb, God's son, had to be slain. It was our only hope, humanity's only hope. So let me tell you a little bit about Jesus, the lion and the lamb. Did you know that the lion rules eternity with his golden scepter? The lamb humbly serves the least of these. Jesus as the lion scatters enemies. As the lamb, he offers mercy to his enemies. Jesus threw merchants out of the temple for making a place of worship a den of thieves. He rebuked dishonest leaders, calling them hypocrites, thieves, snakes, and vipers. That was the lion. The lamb, on the other hand, saved a woman caught in adultery when a mob was about to execute her. He restored her dignity as a daughter of God with forgiveness. You know, 1 John 3, 8 says that Jesus, the lion, destroys the work of the devil. The lion annihilates sin, sickness, and disease. If you let him, the lamb saves our soul with sacrifice. The lion defends our soul by being greater on the inside of us. The lamb ministers mercy and grace. The lion ministers justice and vindication. The lamb ushers you in. The lion empowers you to go out. The lamb was slain for your freedom. The lion roars his advance of freedom. The lion fights for you. The lamb is slain for you. The Lord Jesus is the perfect matrix of all that we need, but we need all of him, not half. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him shall not perish but have eternal life. But we must believe on Jesus, the real Jesus, the entire Jesus. Acts 4 verse 12 says, and there is salvation in and through no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by and in which we must be saved. That's the only identity that we can be saved in. What is it? Jesus, the lamb that takes away the sins of the world, but also Jesus, the lion who enforces the victory over evil, death, and the grave. Check this out. Hosea 13, verse 14. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. Oh, that sounds good. I will redeem them from death. Oh, death, I will be your plagues. Oh, grave, I will be your destruction. 
pity is hidden from my eyes. Jesus, the lamb, ransoms and redeems us. But Jesus, the lion, he destroys your plagues. He is the destroyer of the grave. And Hosea says, the lion doesn't play games with these enemies. Praise the Lord. As both lion and the lamb, Jesus perfectly occupies two extreme offices. He is the king of all kings. And at the same time, he is the high priest atoning for the sins of humanity by sacrificing himself as the spotless lamb. The high priest conveys the will of God to humanity and transfers the blessing. The king has indestructible power to overcome our weaknesses for us. The priest pays our debts with his own blood. As the lion, Jesus, the king of kings, he's the exalted ruler over his governing body called the ecclesia, the church. We must believe in him as king and priest, lion and lamb, to possess our destiny. To believe one or the other is to truly not believe in Jesus. You can't believe half a truth and not live under a whole lie. Think of this. We receive grace and favor by the Lamb. We rule over the circumstances through the Lion. One Lord, the King and the Priest, the Lion and the Lamb, Jesus. Take a look at Romans 5:17. Much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself, reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Christians who don't reign are a pain. <laughs> Stephen, why do you say that? <laughs> because they refuse to take authority over their inner self, their thought life. Like Paul the Apostle said, they're immature and carnal in their thinking. They get on social media, they point fingers, they manipulate, and they're divisive. They hurt the brand of Christ because they're too busy insisting on their brand. Yeah, this is my thing. Don't be a pain, just learn to reign in Christ Jesus. Not over others, let that go. We reign over a bad attitude and selfishness. Let the world do all the crazy stuff. We just keep our eyes on the lion and the lamb. So how do we apply this lion and lamb matrix to our own lives? Because this really matters. The better we know and understand Jesus, the better we know and understand our design. You were made in the image of God. You get your design from his identity. That means embedded in you is the full spectrum of identity molded from the lion and the lamb. Could it be that we're fans of sporting events because we want to see the lion in our design? We recognize heroes in military, law enforcement, firefighters because of sacrifice, the willingness to lay down one's life to save another life. It's the humility, the sacrifice, the lion and the lamb. Even if it's a movie, we like to imagine the idea of that full spectrum of reality in us. The Bible calls us the sheep of God's pasture. As a lamb, you are led by the good shepherd. But then in other scriptures, we see the extreme other side of who you are. Proverbs 28 verse 1, the uncompromisingly righteous are bold as a lion. That's embedded in your design when you're in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 1.7 says that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. We get to imitate God. Maybe the reason you feel lost, it's because you've believed a lie about your design, who you are, that you're some misfit, neither lion nor lamb, just a pacifist, acquiescing to the culture, and then angry and bitter because of all the fear that you just can't deal with. A person can be a loving parent and a fighter pilot defending the country. Guess what? Loving moms are both the nurturing doe and the growling bear. Yes, the Lord is the matrix of both life extremes, making him authentic, powerful, and effective. We only lose if we choose to deny one side of who he is. That's like wanting one side of a gold coin, but refusing the other side. Now you don't have either. It's a fraud. There's no value. That's not the Lord Jesus. He is the lion and the lamb, regardless if you believe it or not. The Bible asks in Romans 3, it says, does a lack of faith in God nullify and void the faithfulness of God? Of course not. God is always true and he's always authentic and real. Now it's time for you to get real. 
You were made on purpose for a purpose, but you can't do it without Jesus. He's the lion and the lamb. Can you see that? He gives you more than forgiveness of your sins, but a restoring, rebirthing work, getting you back your original design, your original authority, power, and connection with God's family. We all need that. It's the true life of your being. We live from the inside out, not from the outside in. You need all of Jesus, the lion and the lamb. Are you concerned about the troubling events that you see overtaking this world? Do you find yourself fighting off anxious feelings about the corruption overtaking the culture globally? Hopeless people stumbling in the dark, does that move you? The world needs the real Jesus, the lion and the lamb. You need the real Jesus, the lion and the lamb. Where are you in your faith? I'm not asking if you trust in Jesus, but how do you trust in him? When you're ignorant of your design, of any design, you abuse that thing. Even if it's another person or your own person, look around. People are mutilating themselves, trying to become, trying to be something worthy of life. Humanity has thrown itself into perversion and dysphoria, trying to find value, attention, a feeling that says, well, now this is living. And when it backfires, because it always does, self-destruction is the end. It's the finale. The better we know Jesus, the better we know ourselves. True identity is found in Christ. God doesn't want to replace you, my friend. He says you're irreplaceable. There is no other you in the universe, but we must be restored back to our original design before all of this sin took place, before the curse. That's the work of the lion and the lamb. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. It's time to trust your all in Jesus. Let's pray together. Jesus, we believe on you. Say that. Jesus, we believe on you. You are the lion and the lamb. You alone are worthy of all the honor and glory. You said for me to come to you and you would give us rest. You paid the price for us by dying on the cross. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. We can trust you, Savior. Now lead us into a victorious life. All in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. We pray and believe that God's word is guiding your life and your future from this moment on. Thank you for your generous support. Together, we're getting God's good news to others. Sign up today for the free Today's Life Talk, an encouraging gift from Pastor Stephen. He sends directly to your email. At Living Room Church, you are loved, and we pray blessings on you. Remember, Jesus is Lord, and in Him, we can live life strong.